Okay, this is one of those free responses that you're going to see. They give you the graph, and you have to find stuff inside it, and they ask you multiple different questions, so you've got to really know your stuff. This is the 2011 question one. Now, it starts off with the simple stuff, the unregulated price. Well, a monopoly produces where MR hits MC, which is right here. So quantity is 8, they're going to mount the produce, but up to the demand curve, so the price here is 24. Now, the next part of the question asks the profit per unit at 8 units. So at 8 units, the price is 24, and the average total cost of 8 units is 18. So the distance between 6 is the profit per unit. Now, that's the first time they ask a profit per unit question for responses. Normally, they ask you to multiply that out times the quantity to get the box of profit. Make sure you can do both of those, total box of profit and the profit per unit. Next question is, at the profit maximizing quantity of 8, is a monopoly allocatively efficient? The answer is no. But since it's an explain question, you have to explain no and why not. The reason why it's not allocatively efficient is because the demand does not equal the marginal cost. If they were producing the quantity right here is 10, where the marginal cost at demand, then they would be allocatively efficient. But since they're not, there's some deadweight loss and they're not allocatively efficient. Next part of the question says, between prices 16 and 18, is demand elastic, inelastic, or unielastic? The right answer is it is inelastic. But again, it's an explain question, so you have to explain how you got the answer inelastic. You could have said one of two things. One, because the MR is negative, you could have also said because the price went down, the total revenue went down. Because the total revenue test, that makes that inelastic. Does that make sense? The next part of the question asks if the government came in and started to regulate this monopoly and forced the output to be 11. If 11 is the output, is there economic profit was the first question. The answer is no. There is no economic profit. Now this is an explained question, so you have to say why. The reason why is because the price equals the average total cost. If at your 11 units, the price and the ATC equal each other, this firm is making no economic profit or normal profit. But at that 11 units, they are still making positive accounting profit. So is accounting profit positive? The answer is yes, it is. Now you didn't have to actually explain this one, but you should understand the idea that when you're making no economic profit, you are still making accounting profit. Now the question continues on with more regulation. It says, as soon as a price ceiling at 22, $24 was the unregulated monopoly's price, but they can't charge that anymore. Now they can only charge up to 22. So first question is, what's the marginal revenue of the eighth unit? Well, since they can't even sell it for 24, the marginal revenue is actually only 22. So 22 is the right answer. In other words, the government has effectively put on a price ceiling all the way through there. You can't raise the price higher than 22. So this monopoly essentially becomes a price taker at the price of 22 up to that quantity 9. And so to sell another unit, they sell for 22. Another one, 22. Another one, 22, because they can't sell it for more. And so the marginal revenue of the eighth unit is 22. Now, what quantity are they going to produce? Well, they're going to produce where MR hits MC. So in this situation, this MR kind of disappears. It doesn't look like this anymore at all, right? The MR is now horizontal, and then it continues on below here. And so that is technically the marginal revenue. Now, don't freak out. It makes sense. If the government says they can't increase the price beyond 22, then that's the price that they're going to be charging, which equals the marginal revenue. At this point, they can start lowering the price, so the marginal revenue continues on as it would before. Now, with this regulation, what's the quantity they're going to produce? Well, they produce where MR equals MC, which is quantity 9. That's the output. Now it's time for the last question. In G, if this monopoly starts to practice perfect price discrimination, what is the quantity and how much is the consumer surplus? Well, this marginal revenue is not going to be here anymore if they can price discriminate. Right? What happens now is the marginal revenue actually becomes the same as the demand. Right? They don't lower the price of previous units, so the demand and marginal revenue is here for a price discriminating monopoly. They'll produce where MRI is MC, so the quantity must be 10. 10 units is the output for price discrimination. Now notice, since they're producing quantity 10, that's the allocatively efficient output. Right? That's one from right here. They would produce the amount society wants, allocate efficiency where there's no debate loss, but only if this monopoly was price discriminated. Now, the last question, what about consumer surplus? Well, the consumer surplus would be zero. There would be none. Wait, why? Well, because if they're price discriminating, charging every single person up to what they want to pay, the person who's going to pay 40, paid 40. The person who want to pay 30, paid 30. The person who want to pay 24, paid 24. And so with price discrimination, each consumer pays up to what they want to pay, so there is no consumer surplus. That is a bear of a free response. Now, when they give you a monopoly graph, you have to really know your stuff because they're going to ask a lot of detailed questions. Now, that's it. That's it for response. It's out of 10. Out of how many points you deserve, and try the next for response.